Jennifer, you sounded great on the radio this week. He was on the radio? I didn't know he was on the radio. With Monty? No, I was extensively quoted with Bill Newman, but I wasn't oh, talking about it. Maybe that was it, but I just remember. Hmm. That must be in a different time. <laughs> Anyways. That'd be fun to be It was about you and Ned and Chief Sinkowitz and, and Dave Narkowitz. Yeah, yeah, that was. was you guys yeah. just, it just sounded so infinitely reasonable. Oh, that's the occupied. Oh, oh yeah. The occupied in our I didn't hear that. I said, what, what, what was I doing? Uh, Bill was oh, interviewing the very right recent Dave, uh, you know, the two guys from the Red Hat Media. And yeah, Dave, Dave and I had just talked for about a half an hour right before yeah, the Dave meeting. Reed. Oh, yeah. Well, it is now time. Okay. Yes. Um, Mike's not coming, and I haven't heard from Gary. Um, so let's open up the meeting. Um, First, uh, for your approval, the minutes of the September 28th meeting. Approval. Second. Okay. Adjustments, sir. I set my adjustments to DJ. Yeah, I gave you a copy of the last paragraph. For some reason, I didn't finish You're on the September 28th. Of your jars that you take care of. I just listened to one minute and forgot to finish, so. I have. The announcement of who is videotaping our meeting. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Mimi, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. Mimi Rogers, filming for North Street Neighborhood Association. Great, thank you. Um, so, all in favor of accepting the minutes of those oh. adjustments? Oh, yeah. Hi. Me too. Hi. Hi. Okay. Hi. Great. Yes. Super. How about uh, the minutes for October 12th? Move approval. Second. Comments? Questions? All in favor? Aye. All right. Great. Uh, so Nicole Stanford is here to talk to us about the Water Supply Protection Grant and Land Acquisition. No, oh, there's a protection grant mm -hmm. and this possible land acquisition. Right, yeah. Basically, I'm here to, to ask the board to vote um, so that we can acquire water supply property um, off the of Henhock Trail in Williamsburg um, and to apply for a drinking water supply grant, which is due November 1st. Is this the uh, land we previously discussed? Yes. And are we, are we, we need a formal vote by the board for the grant application process, which is a 50% reimbursement. <coughs> for that acquisition? Yes. So that's what we're looking for is a, a formal vote by the board that, uh, you know, to go forth with the grant and uh, still work on the negotiation of the purchase of it. Well, we have a grant that's due November first. November first. Uh, is there a dollar sign connected to the grant, or is it just a fifty percent? It's a fifty percent of our costs, and I'll let Nicole describe those costs. Sure, it's it's a fifty percent of the, of the costs associated with the land acquisition. So it's whatever the the acquisition price is itself, and then I think you can roll in property survey costs, recording fees. And you're still doing that, negotiating for that. Final price. Yes. Okay. Is it your sense that um, you'll be able to reach an agreement that's within the framework we discussed? Yes. Great. Super. I move approval. Second. So we're making a motion to apply for the grant. Apply for the grant and give you the authority to, to finalize the negotiations? Yes. I'm just, was this something that was discussed at a previous meeting when you say things we've previously discussed? I'm just... We talked about an executive session. Executive session, okay. okay. So I think what we're doing is approving the application of the grant and not doing a final approval of the acquisition of the land or a price for that. No, because it's still in the negotiation. Right. Do you have the negotiation? We're wise, uh, authorizing her to continue grant. negotiating. Her. Okay. Maybe we can just leave that off. Yeah, well, just leave the, the, we haven't made the formal vote to acquire or to settle on the price of the land. Okay. Right, I, I think that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, all in favor that way? Aye. 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 Great. Do we know when we Thank find out call. about that? About the grant? Mm -hmm. um, I believe their schedule is February. Okay. That's great. Thank great. Thanks, Nicole. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you have a motion to take number two in old business. Sorry, so <laughs> so so what so did old I didn't hear what he said. He didn't say. He mumbled something. He mumbled. 
You, you have something you want to share with us all, Jim? I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> what are we taking out of order? I couldn't hear uh, because open, someone's right. talking. Old oh, business number two, that. so that Karen can uh, oh, talk to okay. us. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. And which of these updates is this? Uh, this is in the means based the discount means -based proposal. Discount. So this was something that I brought to you in April, and you asked me to go back and do more research, which I did, and um, we, I wanted to tell you that the committee, the ad hoc committee, which is um, Patty Shaughnessy, Marianne Labarge, Diane Lake, and Ruth, I forget her name. McGrath. McGrath. Um, we've met twice. We are meeting again next week. That, that's just a separate process that's going on, and I'll explain that a little bit more. But uh, what we'd like to propose is that this is a, um, a really simple, easy first step for a means-based discount because it's an existing program in the city that pre-qualifies property owners um, who, who, would, who could qualify for a, a permit discount and also a bag discount. But I do want to make it clear that this, this ad hoc committee is continuing to work on other um, approaches and we will be bringing proposals back to you in the future. So you want to briefly outline how this one would work? Well, this is done um, through the assessor's office. Um, they qualify for a property tax um, reduction or in some cases an exemption, also the CPA um, fees. And so the, the assessor keeps a, an up-to-date list all the time. So basically if the um, resident was on that list they would qualify for a $5 vehicle permit and every quarter they would be able to purchase bags through the DPW half price. And every quarter is just because, in some cases, you know, we don't, we want to make sure that people are still on the list and sometimes they're on the list temporarily or for six months or whatever. So. Yeah, how many bags can they buy? Well, this is, this is proposed right now as a, um, because it's just per quarter that it would be one package per <coughs> quarter, but that's, that actually could be changed in the future, I don't know. Um, but, you know, it, it's, we don't want to have an unlimited supply of bags. Because no, I, I the, think right. <laughs> One package sounds great. I think it's a good program. Now this is, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No. Uh, this is something that, that was previously on the books. No, no, this was something that, um, in response to the task force looking at means-based um, discount approaches. This is just something that's already existing in the city that we can use. And as I said, this ad hoc committee is going to continue okay. to find other ways that people could be pre-qualified um, without our doing all the, the vetting of so we, we don't have a policy for these people who no. are pre-qualified, but the pre-qualification Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's what I was after. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think this is great, and I think it goes in the direction that I would like to see it going to. My only concern is that um, using the assessor's office uh, that the in the clause, depends on whether people own property and for those people that don't own property that might very well qualify and there might even be more of them that qualify for a means-based discount it doesn't allow them to to uh, tag on to this but I also understand that that's going to be much more complex so this yeah, is right we're actually working on a proposal um, that would cast a wider net for people who don't own property or who don't go through this process, which is, I understand, rather onerous. Um, so it would, it would allow us to basically serve people who are already on other kinds of assistance programs. Mm -hmm. So they've been 
I keep on using pre-qualified because the DPW does not want to do that work. No. But there are, um, between um, community action and the Council on Aging and some other community service organizations, they could give us a very reliable, um, you know, a referral. So if they came with a letter um, saying that they were pre-qualified, then we would yeah. just go ahead. So we're working on that. Good first step. Yeah. yeah. So we imagine that over time there might be more bullets behind these special, below these special programs. Yeah. And something else I would point out that's, that has struck me about this for people who don't own property, mm -hmm. that would imply that they're renting property, and all landlords are required to offer. Is that true? You're right. Yeah. Not in a one, two-family house. Yeah. Only that's more than two-family. Actually, you do have a good point. The, the vast majority of the low-income um, residents in Northampton are served by the Housing Authority, Country Lane Estates, other low-income housing, and they are being provided with trash service and recycling service. So, you know, we're the policy that we're working on kind of tries to identify the people who are falling through the gaps mm -hmm. of this one, the property owners, yeah. the tenants who are already taken care of, but there are people that are, you know, we're, we're trying to focus on that population. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Great. I think this is great. All right, so this has been, <coughs> any other questions? Do we have any estimate about the loss of income? We there are about 300 people who apparently um, are in this program. So it didn't seem like it was a ton of... Yeah, and not all of them use our transfer stations. Um, I'd like to move approval. So all in favor of approving this new um, policy? Aye. 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 Sure. Cool. All right. So one abstention. Everybody got a rule. Of? <laughs> There's a black L on his forehead for late. No. Late. Late. Uh, okay. Next is um, informational. It's a solid waste update, and it's um, specifically. Uh, I think MJ, you've mentioned. Um, I've gotten emails. Maybe we all have from members of the task force. Uh, some of the people in the public have asked about the recommendations mm -hmm. that the task force made to us. Um, under 11 on the, under the business, Terry, on the informational? Yes. Is that what you said? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, is, that's where this is, we've slotted this. I think MJ, okay, never mind. I, I did ask that we, that I, I've been making a distinction between us accepting the recommendations from the Solid Waste Committee earlier this year and mm -hmm. then making decisions to move forward and implement them. Okay. Well, and where, where I was where headed we that. was that um, I asked uh, Karen and Jim to um, give us an update. Mm -hmm. I'm like, where is it at? Mm -hmm. it just, it's all a little nebulous. And so I believe Karen's going to just give us an update of where things stand, whether we accept what's left or not, you know. But this sure. is number 11 under So, um, Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think. <laughs> so right. So, anyway, I guess we're talking about number 11. Yes, I was following my, instru I got my instructions here, and I was following them without reading that carefully. <laughs> so, um, I'll speak to this just for a minute. I thought I was confused, but not why I wasn't. Um, there's a lot of the tasks and recommendations that came out of the Solid Waste Production Management Task Force. We're actually, things that we, a lot of things that we were already working on here at the department. Mm -hmm. um, some that we weren't working on. Many of them, which we had been working on, continued to work on in the interim. Um, Karen um, and I worked uh, to kind of group them into tasks that we felt were completed or near completed, or things that were a little bit further down the road for us to look at. We organized. Um, those tasks in a bloated format in the handout that was emailed to the board a few days ago. So ho hopefully you've had a chance to at least take a peek at what was sent. Um, and then I guess uh, Karen can go through a, a brief overview of the, of the different items, but you'll see that um, many of the things that were recommended by the task force were actually 
initiatives that we were working on that would have been done. So if you want to just give a um, So I'll go through the completed tests rather quickly. Um, the composting, we certainly have been, we've been distributing compost bins since 1989. And the, so the demand is down, but we certainly um, keep the program going actually year round not just the distributions we have we always have extra that we can give by or give out by appointment uh, the the bag system is in place and you'll hear later that it's very successful at this point um, the third one about using environmentally sound approaches for managing e-waste and hazardous materials um, we, we always use companies that are on the state contract, and so they are being heavily audited by the state, and we have full confidence in the way that they manage those materials. Um, fourth one is expanding the, uh, well, continuing the food waste collection program. It actually has been expanded recently because the pedal people are delivering food waste to Locust Street. And every participant has to fill out a survey. So we asked specifically if they, if we had another drop off at the landfill, whether they would use it. And the majority have said no. So we're not really looking at expanding it to the landfill at this point. Um, actually, the the next one you just accomplished, phase one. As I said, the committee is continuing to work on that and we will be bringing proposals back to you. What was the next one? I don't have that. Oh, I'm sorry. The um, implement a means-based discount. Okay. Um, and working with callers to explore ways to provide educational materials. Um, it's part of the permitting process and also part of the mandatory recycling regulations that they have to provide <coughs> educational materials to us and their and an explanation of how they use them. So once again, in November, December, we're in that process of re-permitting. So that's going on. Um, for difficult to manage waste, such as e-waste, unwanted medication collections, household hazardous waste collections are, are being held on a, a regular basis. You probably know about the drug collection that's happening this Saturday. That's, that's going to be ongoing probably April, October every year. We also have um, reciprocal agreements with other communities so that our residents can attend their hazardous waste collections and yep, vice versa. Ours. Yes. Okay, good. And we also um, serve businesses at our hazardous waste collection on a fee basis, of course. Um, as far as... Um, Keeping information updated, that I would call that an ongoing process, but we certainly are using all these formats and are continuing more, or to explore more electronic outreach and social media and all that. Um, exploring ways to increase recycling opportunities in public spaces and city buildings. We've recently um, completed an inventory of all the municipal buildings and have ordered additional recycling for different kinds of containers basically to fit people's needs. So there's it's as convenient as it can possibly be and you know covers every desk in the city. Um, we have a hundred um, public recycling containers that we have a loan program for. They're actually uh, kept at Look Park because they're used extensively at the events there. Um, city schools, we're, we're looking at that. That's basically, that's school grounds. That's, you know, the playgrounds and um, sports fields. Downtown sidewalks, we, um, this is Florence and downtown Northampton. We have really good coverage, but um, Working with the pedal people, we have identified a few other places where we need to place more recycling containers. But that program is very successful. So um, did you have any questions on the what we called on the completed? Yes. 
um, on the uh, educational materials from the haulers, do you just take what um, they give you, or do you have guidelines that they should be using to do their educational materials? Well, what we found last year was that the materials weren't consistent, and they didn't always include everything that they can recycle, because, you know, in western Massachusetts, pretty much all goes to the Springfield MRF one way or another. Um, so we did update their materials. Um, Basically, no, I wouldn't say that we have guidelines, but we definitely make sure that they are up to a, a standard, and, and they have revised them in the past. That's right. And then, um, uh, I wanted to ask a question. Can you remind me, and I know we discussed this in Solid Waste, uh, the education subgroup, what we were working on websites, and then that got um, stymied, and could you just remind me what happened there? Well, the city has a... Um, has a website template and they really don't want any department to stray from it. So we have this format um, that I that I know how to use and so I'm updating the, the website. Um, the city would like to expand the capabilities of that particular framework, but of course that costs money and so they're aware that of the things that need to be improved with the with the city's web software, but and we certainly could pay for customization if we wanted to, but for the board or for the DPW or just as our subset from the city. Not sure what you mean. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to figure out, you're saying we, we're following, what you're si implying is that the website we have so far follows the city um, guidelines. I right. Mean, my, my recollection was that we had a meeting a little while ago was that um, the city had some plans to update the, the city's website on the whole, mm -hmm. of which we're just a small portion of that. Right. So we were, we were told a little, a little while ago to hold off on that's doing anything sort of independently in terms of new structure or format or... Right. making mm -hmm. anything too too fancy and that we should try to work within the city's website format as that gets updated and granted that's been it has been a little while since yeah, we had that meeting mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what the city schedule is to update the overall city website I think Karen's been working pretty well in terms of trying to make improvements within the framework that we have mm -hmm. we're trying to keep things updated we're trying to upload more documents mm -hmm. we're trying to put more schedule information and I think within what we have, the, the format that we have, I think we're making the, the best use of what we have. Um, we'd certainly like to do to do more with it, and in the future, we're, you know, we'll be looking at, at that, whether it's within, you know, hopefully it'll be within an improved citywide website, but one way or another, we'd like to continue to make improvements on it. Any other questions for Karen? Mimi? Um, when you talk about the compost at the landfill, about how there's not that much interest, you're asking only the people who come here to fill out the form. Mm -hmm. Have you just tried to do any kind of outreach to the people who actually go to the landfill to dispose of their trash? Because it seems to me that geographically people choose to go one place or the other, so mm -hmm. that might be a reason to not say they're... Not that I'm pushing for compost collection yeah. at the mm -hmm. landfill, mind you. Just the, asking. I think the yeah. thought was that, and Karen can, can chime in, at least my, my thought on it was that when we, get, when, we, when we had set up the program for free, that anybody that would be interested in composting would have registered for free, regardless of whether it was at, uh, at Glendale Road or at Locust Street. So we felt like the data that Karen was getting back from the surveys was pre pretty reflective of the, you know, the folks that would be interested in, in composting. But um, you know, we can certainly do a little more outreach and see if there are other people that didn't participate in the free program to see if maybe they would participate if it was more convenient. Or even like a sign that would be up at the mm -hmm. landfill that would just say this this is a program that's available. I, I don't know, just to yeah. see if, I just know that like I would never go to the transfer station. I think the other, I think the other um, issue for us in terms of expanding the program is we're, we're still in the pilot program phase where, um, I forget one, it was a couple months ago we started to roll out a fee. Mm -hmm. It's a fee for service program now. So we're trying to gauge what the level of interest would be um, for people that are, what are the numbers of people that are willing to pay a fee and will the program 
just at Locust Street pay for itself. We need to figure out if that'll work before we look at expanding it. So it's sort of a you know one step at a time type of thing. We're reviewing the financial feasibility of one location. If that looks like it's going to be you know a great program and, and makes money and self-sustaining, then we can look at the next step of maybe expanding it. So we're hesitant to expand too quickly in a lot of different places if we don't think these programs are going to stand on their own. So good, good question. Gary? I was just thinking that uh, my, my hunch would be that people using the Glendale Road uh, drop-off place wouldn't necessarily be interested in composting because they'd be more likely to just do it at home. But this is full rural. composting. This isn't just fruits and vegetables. It's, you know, it's everything. It's everything. Oh, I understand that. Most people so. don't compost everything. <clears throat> Right, there are what, 270, what was the 275. number? 275. 275 who want co composting here. Uh, I Not don't know counting if, the pedal people. Right, it just seems if you have more than a half acre, you're probably going to just compost at home, I would think. Unless it's, you know, you're going through a lot of meat or something and you really didn't want to try to deal with that. That's yeah, a good that, point. That, it wouldn't, wouldn't hurt to mm -hmm. go outside. Well, then, then you're going to get c called for uh, feeding the bears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Sorry. Um, can I ask one more quick question? Mm -hmm. the, uh, real quick. The uh, communication, the, the the idea that other communities we could drop off our e-waste to other communities is that something that's mm -hmm. uh, hazardous waste? Oh, I'm sorry, hazardous waste. Is that something that's advertised anywhere? I mean, I never heard of that before. So. Well, we we get calls year round from people who have you know they're moving or their parents you know died or something, and they have to get rid of stuff at that time. So it's not really advertised. Could we put it on our calendar? Yes. Well, the hazardous waste collection is... No, the, the nearby ones. Oh, yes. Actually, the you know, the April Reduce, Reuse, Recycle Guide, the entire Western Massachusetts schedule of hazardous waste collections and contact information is... is um, and is that on our website? Yes. A link to that is on our website. And then just one more quick point. Um, as part of the reducing and the recycling stuff, I just want to let everyone know if you're not aware that Ryan Road School no longer uses styrofoam trays. They now have paper trays that will be being biodegradable, I believe. That was the uh, new superintendent made that change. So just FYI. So any other questions for Karen? That, that was actually only page one. Because there's... Oh. Uh, there's a in process and future. Well, press on. Okay. <laughs> so um, the MassDOT site, I think you have been keeping up to date with that, and the Reuse Committee is very interested in becoming more active in advocating for that site. Um, the implementation plan, basically we do have um, very good um, tools to, and expertise to to do this task at the appropriate time, but it, it is a little premature. Um, so we'll we'll be updating you on that as at the proper time. Um, the the reuse uh, programs and and possibly a permanent center. We do have a very active, exciting reuse committee, which you get updated on. Um, utilizing best practices in decision making, um, we certainly make every effort to do that. Um, as far as illegal dumping, I'm working with the Board of Health. We do have a lot of regulations on the books and the fines are adequate. However, we are looking at how we could enhance enforcement and maybe by more cooperation between police, Board of Health, DPW, and others, and maybe an educational campaign. Um, so we're, we're looking at ways to decrease illegal dumping and, in, and increase enforcement. Uh, the schools, we are currently working with Jackson Street, Leeds Elementary, Bridge Street School is getting um, a dishwasher, so they also will be losing their styrofoam trays. So we'll have, and then Ryan Road, um, going into the food waste composting program this year and other waste reduction programs. We've actually submitted quite a few grants, grant applications to 
do a zero waste program in the schools. Um, any questions about yeah, in process? Question? Yeah, I just wondered if you had an increase in illegal dumping. Have you seen it? No. no. Um, but this is in anticipation of the landfill closing that yeah. we want to make sure that we're we're prepared. Okay. I mean, the, the meadows and, you know, that's just been ongoing for a long time. And we're looking at ways that we can decrease. Close that down. Decrease yeah. the um, opportunities to do that. And okay. And another question on that. Um, for the enforcement alternatives that are being reviewed, are you looking at non-criminal dispositions on this? Oh, well, we already have that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and who can issue them? You don't have to be an officer, a police officer. Yeah, the, actually, it's it's mostly the Board of Health. They, uh, most of the authority is under the Board of Health, but, of course, the police. Mm -hmm. And there are some, like, the, there's a downtown barrel. You know, you can't put your own trash into the downtown barrels. DPW can enforce that. But we're thinking about how we might be able to revise some of those regulations so, to increase the number of people who are who can enforce it. Should they actually do drop their trash in the downtown barrels? I've seen them come down on yeah. an apartment with a bag of trash. Yeah, but there, there are signs on the downtown barrels yeah, now, so. We need to deputize Jim, so <laughs> <laughs> he can tackle the bring into action. <laughs> and then a uh, future, um, the, it's just premature again for, to be for any any group of people to become active in the solar panels. Jim could probably address that better, but that's just something that we have to wait for. And this um, the zero waste plan, we we'd like to propose that that's a a great um, opportunity for a group of people to get together and focus on. So maybe early next year we could. You know, appoint a, a committee, ad hoc committee, to work specifically on this. But we still have a lot of things going on right now, so it, and heading into the end of the year, not a very good time to start it right now. But. Great. Thanks, Karen. So I, I just wanted to say that with the implementation of the, the new plan, um, when the uh, landfill closes down, it, it, the when we first started talking about this, the landfill was scheduled to close in June 2012, and our best estimates now are October. Actually, the latter, the latter part of uh, near the end of 2012. Actually, I got some updated information that I haven't shared with them. Okay. okay. Oh, sure. Thanks. <laughs> that will be uh, near the December 2012. <laughs> so we are looking at the It's never going to close. That's the problem. <laughs> Thank you. So I don't think any action is required. It's informational. Thank you, guys. And then the other piece is uh, you're going to... Did you have anything to say about the banks? Yes. Yeah. You asked for an update. And is that in a different... One informational. It's going to be a verbal uh -huh. report. To the okay. Board. So now we're going to number one informational. Could, could I just have one more thing about this, uh, Connor? Thank you for putting this together. Um, I'm wondering if we should uh, mail out the status report to all members of the Solid Waste Committee. Can do that? Any thoughts yeah. on that? Oh, yeah. yeah I can City do that. councilors. Yeah, I think that would be a really good thing. And city councilors. What do you think? Yeah. I think it's yes. kind of good news. It's, yeah. Yeah. Once you organize it, it's. Yeah. It's very impressive how much yeah. is already done. I think so too, and the completed is longer than the uh, to come. <laughs> so here's more good news. Um, I'm just going to give you like an overview, and this is a, a, a snapshot between what happened last year during this transitional period. Let's just say July to now, so end of October, um, compared to 2011. So residential permits are down 10%. Senior permits are up 10%. But I do want to say that we're still actively selling permits because we started in 2010, we started selling them in June this year because of the 
bag system we didn't start until July 1 so we're a little bit behind I think this gap is going to close and I think a few weeks ago Jim indicated that the trend for residential permits for the past eight years has been down anyway and the trend for res uh, senior permits has been pretty steady so you know we're, we're basically where we're supposed to be I was interested in looking at day passes, which are temporary passes to the landfill, because that might indicate how much impact um, Valley Recycling is having on us. So residential day passes are at more than 100%. Business and non-resident day passes are down to 65% of what we did last year. And that probably is a combination of, you know, they don't need anything to go to Valley Recycling. and and not to be underestimated is the economy because, you know, clean outs and all that, it's kind of a discretionary activity. So, um, and, and looking again at, at like our bulky waste revenue, that 71 percent of what we had last year, kind of the same thing about the economy, although Valley Recycling does have higher fees for bulky waste and difficult to handle waste. So I don't think it's that much of a competitive, um, we have a competitive advantage. Um, the overall disposal, residential disposal revenue, it's really too early to tell because, um, you know, we had such a, um, you know, we were exchanging stickers for bags and, um, a lot of other things have been going on and so the program has only really been in place for two months and we're still in transition so I'll say that by January we'll we'll be able to give you a good revenue report um, one thing that's really interesting about the the distribution of bag sales uh, kind of a national rule of thumb is if you have two bag sizes it's going to be 70 percent large bags and 30 percent medium bags. Of course we have three sizes but we, we've turned this on its head it's completely opposite. So it's 33 percent large, 60 percent medium, and 7 percent small. And so I think it really, um, there might be a lot of explanations for this but I think it, it shows that Northampton is pretty unique and that we don't I produce as much waste per household as. Did you say seventy percent small? Well, no, seven, seven percent. So that's you know that's like <laughs> these these little bags, the mini bags, are kind of like I don't know. They're becoming more fashionable actually, but there's still a small percentage of what we're selling. I'm not at all surprised by that because the medium bag fits into the you know your standard and usual kitchen. Mm -hmm. Um, receptacle yep. and the large bags have never been big enough to, to move into the, the large outside rubber made container. So they I just are not on mine. That's what I use at home. You want so to see the I size of the container she uses. Yeah, it must be big. So I yeah. We just we just abandoned using Costco the large ones on the media. You must have bought yours at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> So um, a couple other things, looking at the, um, the trash generation at both the landfill and Locust Street and the recycling tonnage, um, again it's been a general trend over some period of time that both trash and recycling has been decreasing. So let's just look at Locust Street. Um, the trash, is, we're at 85% of what we were last year. But the recycling were at 95% of what we were at last year. So basically, they both drop, but the trash dropped more than the recycling, so that results in a 2.7% increase of recycling rate, just calculated on the MRF tonnage, and 3.5 at, at Locust Street. Again, these, these figures will become more reliable as we have more data. And as far as the, um, the retailers, we still have 16 retailers, three municipal offices that are distributing the small bags, and we're 
working with Walmart, they'll definitely be in the program by early next year. Um, the top seller is Stop and Shop. The second is Big Y. Um, State Street is, is I, I'm so amazed at how much business they're doing. And Cooper's comes in fourth. Oh. So um, the retailers have, we haven't had any retailers drop off and drop out. And um, so that's all good news too. And I, do you have any, well, I had one other update, but not about the bag program, but do you have any um, questions about the bag program? I just had a question about the recycling. With the education effort that we did last spring, um, I, I don't know if we ever got uh, recycling loads rejected at the mark, but was there any decrease in that or any change in that? We haven't had any rejected loads at the, at the mark. And um, so I, I was looking at some of the um, trends for the major haulers, and I have I have some good news about that too, actually. Um, Allied waste is increasing overall. Alternative recycling systems is increasing after you know they kind of decrease for five or In six increasing months. Increasing. Oh, tonnage and revenue uh, at the uh, oh at the at the land. Um, waste management has been holding steady and slightly increasing. Some of the small roll-off operators like Allen's and Baldwin, who disappeared for a while, are coming back slowly but surely. And the three that are just completely gone, um, Smith College, Tussaud, and B&B. &B. <laughs> um, you know, but basically, you know, I, I think we, we saw a, a, a big exodus in like January, February last year, and then kind of through the summer, kind of a trough, but many of them are kind of coming back. And it's, I guess it's cost-driven because we're still cheaper. And we did adjust our prices, didn't we? We did. Yeah. Okay. Where is Smith College going now? I have no idea. They're not generating any trash. Oh, I bet. Yeah, that was sweet. They went green. Paradise Pond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They just dredged it. <laughs> That's why they had to. All right, Karen, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Yep. Karen was I just want to say one quick thing. That I don't know if anybody saw sure. Sunday's New York Times, but there was a terrible article. This great article on the terrible recycling New York City sure. does in terms of like they only recycle 23% of all the stuff in the, and it's like and the, the highest pedestrian population in the in probably worldwide and, and there there's no place to put all these containers. It's really twenty three percent is pretty good for an urban city. I mean just a few years ago some of those were less than ten percent and yeah. really disaster. But it went from twenty eight percent to twenty three percent. Yeah. Um, downhill. Yeah. So, Alright. So now we're gonna circle back up to the top of the page. Okay. B &B is a I make a motion that we take number two through six, six. All at once. They're all These the are all the same price for snow plowing. Yeah, just read the names here. So, um, everyone approve that motion? Yes. Yes. Great. So, Shippy Landscaping, D. Melnick Trucking, Robert Bikarski, Eric Arali, and Christopher Golak. Are all offering to plow at 75.20 per hour for code 3000 vehicles? Mood approval. Second. There's one code 40,000 vehicle uh, on Mr. Melnick, but he. Oh, but it. he's offered to do it. What a guy. At a lesser cost, that's correct. He is a sweetheart. What is a code 4000 vehicle? It's a larger truck. Wow. Instead of a one ton pickup with a plow, it's probably a 550 or 650 truck. But they get gas separate, right? They get a adjustment, yeah. not an allowance. It's a fuel adjustment based on a fuel diesel price set sometime in 2004. So it's a monthly adjustment we make based on the hours of use. 
And strategically, how do you deploy these guys? In other words, out of the roads. Out of the roads? Oh. They get a call in advance of the storm. Tell them what we tell them what time they, we want them to show up. And they plow for the duration of the event, just like our regular city staff does. And do you tend to use them in neighborhoods or out on the big roads? Uh, depending on what size truck they have is where they'll be assigned, but they have a route so that they stay with it. We try to keep the contractors on their routes and not move off of them. Just like our workers, put them on a different route. You don't know where that manhole cover is raised. You don't know right. some of the obstructions out there. Sometimes, it, most of the time, it works out fine. So in terms of being responsive to some of the people who've come before us or who we've all heard from, I'm sure, they're just as apt to be responsive as a city worker might yeah. be. Uh, they, they report directly to us. They take their marching orders from uh, Rich Parsley, the highway superintendent, during a snow event. And um, they're literally treated like a city employee during those events. They have radios. They have full contact with us. And uh, we determine when they can leave. Great. We always have pretty good luck. Yeah, this is uh, seven routes out of 49 routes. So and it's typically what we see. Pardon me? I'm sorry. Are these all repeat? Um... Mr. Irali is new, and Chris Golick is new. The other ones are repeat. So all in favor of approving these five contracts? Aye. 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 Great. What was the fee last year? Same uh, fee. Same fee. <clears throat> these are the fees that are set by the state. We use the same thing as Mass DOT does for their contract operators. I mean, it's, a, it's actually, a, I think, a better deal for us because when the state hires, they plow on interstates and they don't have all these obstructions and curbing and everything else that we have in the city. So I, I think they get more damage to their vehicle than they do plowing an interstate system. Okay. Uh, next, number seven, contract for winter sand to Bill Willard in the amount of $25,000. Second. Uh, this is an annual bid that we put out. Um, and we had bids from Amy's Landscaping in Chickpea and Delta Sand and Gravel in Sunderland. Uh, we chose both. Uh, we had a, a bid option of delivered price and FOB at the plant. And we decided that with Willard being so close, we'd only award the contract to FOB plant. It's uh, 10 cents more than last year for time. All in favor of approving the contract for Willard? Aye. Aye. A uh, contract for Phase 1 dam safety inspection to GCA in the amount of $8,500. This is a contract with GCA to do dam inspections to two different dams. Um, one of them is the, the dam on Cell Street by Route 10, which is part of the Mill River Diversion System. Um, that's classified as a dam. Um, it is a um, rated by the state as a significant uh, hazard dam, which means it needs to be inspected every five years. Five years has gone by since that was inspected, so the time is um, now for that to be done. Uh, the contract also includes a task to do a phase one inspection at, at uh, the cook stand. Um, that dam inspection, we've coordinated the contents of this contract with Look Park. Um, Look Park is responsible for the inspection at cook stand. Um, we agreed to work with them, to work with GZA to, to get a better combined price by having one contract for both inspections. Both inspections have been on the same day. The administration of the project will be easy for GZA, so it's a, a combined contract for those two inspections. And then uh, the park will reimburse us. Yeah. Uh, and no questions. All in favor of approving the contract for GZA? Aye. 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 Uh, change order number two to contract 267 11 to WM Schultz Construction for the Bradford Street Pumping Station replacement project in the amount of 2782. Uh, uh, what are they doing there that needs to change your order at this moment? You should be amazed. It's a $2 million project, and we haven't had any change orders on this project. And the first cost change order we have on this thing is a $2,782 credit. Yeah. So it's good. We're, we're pleased with the work that Schultz is doing. Um, there's a number of um, small items that have been accumulating on the project. There's, there's four different things that, uh, that have happened on the job that we wanted to tidy up in a change order. Um, one of the, uh, the first one was related to adding a false uh, 
glass panel window on the pump station. Uh, we had originally um, directed SCA to include um, a false window on the outside of the building to improve the uh, architectural aesthetics of the pump station building. Um, that was uh, left out of the bid by mistake by SCA, and um, we asked Schultz to provide that architectural elements for us, and it resulted in a $1,524 increase in the contract amount for that architectural change. Um, the second part of this change order is a credit um, for repair of valve and process piping in the existing dry well. Um, back, this actually dates back to the end of June. Uh, there was a condition where uh, there was a problem with a valve on the existing wet well uh, at the pump station. Um, our wastewater plant staff responded uh, to that to do the repair work. It's uh, while the contractor is responsible for the pump station because it's within the work zone, because our people are local and it was an emergency, the wastewater treatment plant staff went out to the pump station with the repair of the valve and some of the piping. We tracked our costs um, for labor and materials and things, and we sent uh, that information to the contract and saw a credit um, applied to the pump station contract for the work that we did on the repair. Um, so that results in a $1,269.89 decrease in the contract amount. The third item under this change order two was uh, a credit for repair for the existing pump station, including a pump circuit breaker and some electrical work that needs to be done. Um, this work occurred between September 21st and September 27th. Um, included, as I mentioned, the replacement of a circuit breaker. Again, a uh, city electrician and wastewater treatment plant staff responded to an emergency condition to help the contractor resolve a problem out there. Uh, again, we kept track of our costs that the city incurred in assisting the contractor. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the value was $2,635.09, uh, which would be credited to the pump station project. <coughs> and the last uh, item on this change order is a credit for the elimination of a project sign. Uh, there was a requirement in the contract that the contractor provide a project sign. Um, it took forever to try to get a sign out there, and by the time uh, we realized that they were going to get the sign out there, the project is approaching the, you know, the end of the completion, so we said, why don't we just take a credit for the sign and, and not put it up at this point. So that resulted in a $401.25 uh, credit to the project. So it's the culmination of those four minor items that result in the, the $2,782.23 credit on the project. Questions about that thorough summary? Very good. All in favor of approving the change order? Aye. 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 Uh, next we have a discussion. Well, we'll take uh, care of them, Jim. Yeah. We've received a petition oh, 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 to accept. Oh, it's it's Cosman Avenue, which is a private way that aspires to become a public way. And uh, we're thinking we should table this uh, under the same um, basis that we've tabled a couple of these in the past until we figure out where we're going with private ways. I made a motion to table. Second. All in favor of tabling this motion, or this uh, petition? Aye. Aye. Can we check in on where we are with progress, though, on the special subcommittee on private ways? Yes, Gary. One of our members is no longer on the board, um, but we're nowhere with it, really. I mean, uh, the last I recall, we we looked at every one of them on a list. There was virtually like forty of them. Some of them were obviously driveways. Um, some, like Bottoms Road, is a long driveway with a couple of houses off of it, but um, it really makes you wonder why there isn't a road. Um, there's a couple of alleyways that just don't make any sense. And some are neighborhood streets you would never imagine that they were private ways, just put to find. They're just absolutely, they're 30 feet wide, I mean, they're huge, and there's man posts all around them. So, 
some of them just need to be accepted, I, I would think. And, you know, I, most of them we've been plowing. That's really what the variety thing was, is that we're plowing all of these things. Some of them have public utilities under them, some of them don't. The, the challenge, as I understand it, and I don't know if we have even yet a definitive answer, <clears throat> is if we accept them, do they have to be surveyed? Uh, and does the establishment of a right-of-way and an easement for maintenance and construction require land taking? Is there, does everyone along the street have to have their deed modified? I mean, it just makes your head hurt when you start thinking about all of the details that have already been accomplished with a street that's currently a city street. Is that a fair thing to say, Matt? It is. And that's what exactly what we're waiting for is a, an opinion from the city solicitor. Yeah. What we need to go forth with street acceptance and how we perhaps do a betterment assessment to that local community who wants to make it that public way to pay for that work to be done. Because we don't have the funds to do it. If that's what's going to be required. And they'd have to concede the, uh, each, each property would have to concede the easement. Right. No, it just it feels like this comes up over and over again, and I mean it comes up as we talk about plowing and whether or not we're plowing them. It comes up when yeah. there's maintenance issues, mm -hmm. and it feels like we <coughs> keep chasing our tails on. Mm -hmm. That's true, bro. Um, I'm I'm just a little concerned about the people that filled out this peti petition. Did they have an expectation that we would approve this and then it would go on to the city council, or did anybody talk to them or? We would have to go to city council anyways. Yeah. Because they would have to make a recommendation. The petition goes to city council. It gets referenced back to the Board of Public Works and the Office of Planning, and the planning board, to make a recommendation back to the city council. So there's a process involved here, but uh, I'll be going to the city council sometime probably uh, early November at this point to look at uh, an approval to appropriate some of the snow and ice money to these private ways per the Inspector General's ruling that was done. That's the other thing that's kind of brought this to light, the Inspector General's ruling that uh, communities have to appropriate that money for private ways. In fact, um, was that part of the board package, that handout I gave on Mashpee? No. I haven't seen it. There was a big article I got sent from Patty Shaughnessy on the town of Mashpee. And basically, they listed all the private ways that they weren't going to plow this year because they had road defects in them and they didn't want to damage their town equipment. So there's a big article in the newspaper about it. I'll make a copy and yeah, make sure that you get that. Hey. So In the past, when we had approved roads, you may recall, in the past, we've approved a road here and there. Those have all been through the whole planning board, registered development okay. process. Right. The easements are in place. The surveys are in place. Well, you know, they've crossed the T's and dotted the I's mm -hmm. as part of getting the planning board approval. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just not happening for a road that was built yeah. during yeah. World War II or right. you know, right. whatever. So where I was going to go with this was the snow removal. I mean, are we just going to keep going on to this? That's not our goal. Our goal is to have these streets either accepted or not accepted, and we either continue our work or we discontinue all our yeah. maintenance on them. Let's see, and if you're going to the city council for asking for snow uh, removal money for the existing roads that we have been doing in the past, we're going to be pretty much status quo, it sounds like. Well, the problem is that it's always underfunded. Uh, I, I know, I know that. But so what they're going to be doing is looking at appropriating a portion of the or percentage of the, so I envision a percentage yeah. of the roadway miles of this city that are private ways to mm -hmm. continue the status quo this year mm -hmm. with the idea that we resolve this before next winter permanently once and for all. Okay, I thought it was supposed to be resolved like this coming winter, so that's where I was We're going. trying to, just there's not enough time it? in the day yeah. to do everything. Yeah. Okay, that's not, I just, next year. So, that Petition, unfortunately, is tabled. Um, next is uh, old business number one comments from the DPW and perhaps the BPW on the public transportation plan for the city. Oh, 
I meant to put B, not D. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. So we sent this out about a month ago as part of the FYI and uh, the Transportation Parking Commission is looking for the comments from the board. I think it's a well-written draft plan, uh, transportation plan. It covers a number of goals that the subcommittee, the Public Transportation Committee, was working on with the PVTA from extending, uh, increasing service on existing routes to uh, additional service and routes. Uh, future plans for a intermodal transportation center downtown for buses and trains and everything else under the sun, uh, <coughs> uh, better uh, signage for bus stops, um, rail, service. uh, rail service is part of that, so it's it's got some great goals in here, I, I, I saw nothing wrong with it, but they just wanted to vote from the board that they approved this uh, uh, draft public transportation plan so that they can get it finalized in the Transportation and Parking Commission. It's a conceptual plan. Yeah. It's a plan. Yeah. It's it, like if they, they have their goals they'd like to achieve. How they get there, when they get there, is kind of the big unknowns. Yeah. Especially with public funding and state funding. And, and skimming through it, I didn't see anything that said DPW concern. No. I mean, it's not like they want to take out sidewalks or move a road or. No. I, um, I. I the plan, but I did have some concerns. One of the things I, that just sort of caught my eye was additional public transportation along Prospect Street and State Street. I thought that, that there was some question about the quality of those roads and that it just seemed like, even though I'm a huge public transportation uh, for, uh, supporter, um, I, I think it is hard on the roads to have more public transportation. So I'm just throwing that out. When, um, that that I do think it affects the quality of the streets to some extent, but I would quality mean as far as damaging the infrastructure. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so just, yeah. And is there a way you'd like to address that in this? Not really. Plan? I'm just I'm just throwing that out. Yes, okay. No real damage, but that. Well, two things: Prospect and State Street seem a little narrow and a little. Um, I mean, that seems like it would be a great place to have additional public transportation, but you know. Anyway. So I support okay. it, but it's just it's just noting that mm -hmm. it does Maybe use our streets. Well, yeah. the idea of public additional public transportation would give you less private. That is always a theory. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And the uh, the thing that I I noticed our public was lacking or wasn't spoken to was um, any sort of coordination with our school bus transportation planning. That, you know, there's been an ongoing discussion about changing school start hours and how that might impact bus routes, and it's always a big budget item in the school committee. And just wanting to make note that I would encourage the transportation improvement plan to take that, or at least to have that conversation with the transportation plan and, and the school committee. Yeah, very good. I agree. So, if there is a public bus running down the same route, take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Is there a issue associated that with um, young minors being on buses with elderly people and the co-mixing of those people? You have school age children with 50, 60 year old men or women all intermingling on the same bus? Jeez, they do it in Europe. <laughs> they do it in D.C., New York City, they do it everywhere. I just bring it up as a comment. That's all. I, no, I, I, you know, there's, there's always been that question. I, having been on the school committee and having sat and discussed public transportation, that was look at, you know, who are we co-mingling the children with and so on. And, and uh, it, it is talked about whether or not uh, uh, a lot of value was put on it. I'm not quite sure. But the biggest problem with uh, using public transportation is doesn't coincide with the school starting times. Well, and is uh, that something that yeah. could be considered if we decided to make more active use of it as part of our transportation? I think it could the school. be. Yeah. You know, you, it, it doesn't, the chicken doesn't talk to the egg. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, high school kids could easily take a bus from anywhere downtown up to the high school. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Or from Florence Heights or, yeah. you know, the Outlay, Meadowbrook. So are you um, well, I think making a motion that we 
make that comment? I'm, I just wanted that noted in the transportation plan. That, that, there should, that discussion needs to be happening. Yes. If the start times change, which is not going to happen this year or even next year, but if, if there's movement on that, and we'll, I mean, a lot of the discussion is how it is going to impact our transportation for. There's just a couple of sentences in the plan. Yeah, just that's all you need. Plant it so it starts, people start thinking about that they, it. That they look at it. So, what I'll do is I'll frame a small paragraph and I'll send it to you, make sure it's what you wanted to say. And then we can move this to the TPC for whatever approval they want to do. Yeah, I'm also happy just to draft something and put it in writing. Oh, that'd be wonderful. So just send it to me and I'll get it included. Okay. Or have it discussed at the next TPC meeting. Okay. And uh, just circling back to Rose's comment, um, so we have new pavement on State Street. And Con Street. Well, it's fairly new on State also. I think. It is. It's you know, five or six years old. Yeah. I mean, that... that Pavement is designed, it could easily support a, a small bus or something. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Not, yeah, we, we use four inches of bituminous, two in a base course and two in a wearing course. I think we're required to make it really suitable for Good. tractor trailers. And well, those aren't the roads that, that we're worried about. It's the ones that are really dangerous right, yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, MJ has to leave early. But Thanks, MJ. So, uh, and we're going to be so busy. I don't. There's no reason to come back. Okay, I won't. I'm out of here. Thank you, MJ. Thanks. Thank you. Um, okay, so I think that we're all good on yeah. the transportation plan. Yeah. Can I ask a quick question? Yes. You in the audience? The, the the thing that you're talking about, the draft plan, is that available? I mean, I'm just curious to read it. Um. I assume it's a. It's their draft. It's well, their draft from their. So, committee. like, um, if I went to their website or their link, it might be there. I'm not sure if the public transportation committee has a link on the on the city website. Yeah. I know the TPC does, and you may be able to find it underneath the transportation parking commission, okay. underneath the uh, departments and committees. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. And if you can't. Um, Leslie Stein is the person who brought this forth on the Public Transportation Committee to the Transportation and Parking Commission. Thank you. Yeah. And that's it. I've run out of numbers. <laughs> well, no, we have to see if anyone has something to say. I know where you can find more numbers. Gary, for example. Well, I'm sorry I was late. <laughs> but I was... I was and the senior center was giving an award for Smith College. Oh, and we were nice. last on the list, so I had to start. Was it for the good job they did on Elm Street? That uh, was for not on the street itself. No, this was for the good job we did at Morris and Lawrence House, Wright Hall, and John and Green Hall. Oh, okay. Oh, they are related to buildings. Yeah, yeah, why the senior center was it related to senior access? Or I think it had to do with a, a place to meet. Oh, big enough. Being a community yeah. group. Exactly. Yeah. And they it gave up the awards. It was Historical Commission. Oh. It wasn't the Elm Street Historical Commission. Oh. And they gave them out alphabetically. <gasps> I don't know. Smith. It could have been. Okay. Academy of Music was first. Not first. Oh, okay. Oh. They were just before Smith. Uh, it was fun, actually, to see. Yeah. They show slides or something of your buildings. They did? Yeah. It's yeah. Original, you know, like they had a picture of John and Green in nineteen eleven. They had pictures of Morris and Lawrence which were built in eighteen ninety. Talked about eighteen ninety one. And Wright Hall, uh, which was finished in sixty one. And to you, it seems like yesterday. It was yesterday. <laughs> uh, all right. 61, I remember that. Yeah, I assume we all do. Um, <laughs> I so don't. You're all set? Yeah. <laughs> I cannot remember it. I'm all set. Yeah. And Jim? No, I'm all set. Okay. Ned? I'm all set, thank you. Three things. Okay. Sorry. No, it's fine. Um, First thing, I, I wanted to thank uh, David Scher and, and Jim Dostal for all the hard work that they put in on the selection committee for the water management master plan and asset management study. Um, 
we had a we had a few meetings and interviews and we had documents to review probably like this that uh, that they reviewed and provided a lot of valuable input um, to us when we made the selection we decided to award the contract to uh, Camp Dresser McKee to do that study for us and we're currently uh, Ned and I are currently negotiating scope and fee with them for the project so um, it's just one of those things that there's been a lot of work that's gone into it and I wanted to thank the board members for you know for all the reading and eye strain that went, went into that. Um, that was the first thing. Um, the second thing is um, last week on Wednesday evening um, we did a emergency valve replacement up at the water treatment plant and uh, I just wanted to acknowledge Alex Roseware, Greg Nellman and uh, Doug Duchar who worked long hours through the night in order to make that project go without a hitch. No one heard anything about it which is a good thing when you're doing a, a big project like that. We had to shut the plant down um, and there was a lot of activity in a very short time span through the night that needed to be done. Everything went very well and they put in a lot of time and a lot of thought in making that happen. We've got a lot of tremendous expertise up there at the water plant. Um, you know, I'm real proud of the guys that we've got working up there. And a lot of these things that we do go really unrecognized. And uh, when things go well, no one knows about it. So I just wanted to bring it to the board's attention that people are working real hard up there and things are going real well. And, and uh, you know, proud of proud of the time that they put in to make that make that project go because it was a pretty complicated one. How about a letter of commendation from the board? to those people, to be placed in their personnel jacket and given to them. Sure. Do we have to write it? <laughs> but I would, I'd love to sign it. If There's I could. 26 letters in the alphabet, I'm going to just pick one. <laughs> and then the, the last thing is, is sort of a similar vein, and um, I, I talked about it probably in too much detail in the, the Schultz change order, but you know, the staff that we have at the wastewater plant, again, uh, you know, emergency situations at the pump station, and the ability of these guys to come to come and, and take care of problems and the expertise that they have to solve things and jump in there and, and take care of stuff right away. I mean, we really have got a lot of great staff here at the city. And when we have these emergency conditions, I mean, that's when these guys shine. I mean, they really do a great job, and um, I just wanted to acknowledge the work that they're doing. In this particular case, we got you know, not only did they solve a problem, but we get a credit on the project um, that, that Schultz is doing, and um, you know, it's a it's a good thing all around. So, just just to bring that to your attention. You know, in light of this and you know, what you're talking about, wouldn't it be nice if we established a subcommittee that would look into a program that would um, recognize our employees who put out that kind of effort. Uh, as uh, you know, with some kind of a, you know, if it's a letter or whatever it is, but but we ought to have some kind of established protocol that we go through um, of recognizing the uh, um, people that, that go above and beyond, you know, what is a 40-hour work week and, and what's expected of a person. Yeah. We do have one program, which is our Employee of the Year program. This will be its, in its 11th year this year. So mm -hmm. we have that. It originally started off as an Employee of the Quarter program, and that was changed to a yearly program <clears throat> about two years into it. Um, it came a, a lot of work, and I shouldn't say burdensome, it's just a lot of work on our administration staff to do it. So we made it a yearly event. And we're planning to have that in December again, like we do every year. Mm. Yeah, I know that's that's an excellent, excellent program. I was just thinking about expanding into something. We try to think about things like that a lot, Jim. There's not yeah. a lot of ways that we can uh, we can recognize people other than as managers, letting them know that we know what a great job we're doing and being showing up when these difficult things are happening and, and recognizing the work that they're doing. I mean, obviously, we have we've got guys that haven't had raises in three years. You know, so it's it's a, it's a difficult work environment not only for city employees but all around. So we try to do what we can to recognize people because we feel like that's important. And yeah. the Employee of the Year, you know, program has has been pretty successful. But uh, you know, we we do what we can within the constraints that we have. A lot of added boys out there. Yeah, it's I think it's important. Uh, could we uh, just look into see what they may have in other areas. 
in other departments and, and you know surrounding in Massachusetts uh, um, and, and our surrounding states uh, to see Could anybody you, that has some sort of a recognition program. I mean, you know, you, your contacts in other towns are much wider than ours. I mean, I, can you think I, of any one they ask? Or? Well, I, I, I can't, but some of the associations, uh, the uh, Public Works Association and, and uh, uh, you know, the streets people, uh, I don't know that the water pollution control people have anything but an awards program that they do for exemplary operation that they give. But uh, something that the towns themselves do uh, would be, uh, we can, you know, I can uh, look into uh, different aspects of it, but I think you guys got some pretty good input uh, or pretty good connections with, uh, with the state streets association and so on. Bay State Roads. Yeah, Bay State Roads. See if we can't look into. Okay. Gary has a. Well, I just I was thinking I've seen lots of letters come through on our board path that just recognize somebody who's joined the staff. Yes. It's a very a very full thing to yeah. saying so and so joined the staff. I mean, and that's all it'll be. I'd take a form letter like that and just say for you know service, for work and service, overtime hours, whatever, to repair a particular thing. So it would take somebody 10 minutes to, you know, plug in that statement. What was it, what was it they did? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what time of day? What were the circumstances? Yeah. You know, brief description and put it in the file. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. In the private sector, we used to give people cash bonuses for things like that. <laughs> yes, I don't do that anymore either. There's nothing like walk, someone walking in your office and handing you a certain. check for something and it'll tell you. We're a little uh, restricted in that manner. You can do that if you want. What is a good idea? <laughs> um, okay, so D -D -D BJ, you're all set. You look uh, all set. Good. Okay. I got nothing. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Favor. Hi. Thank you, everyone.